Welcome to Art Sessions, the creation of Iris. We're going to jump right in with the 8 inch by 8 inch sheet of heavyweight UPL paper. I'm going to be using 91% isopropyl alcohol with a pipette. I also will be using Jacquard's Brass Metallic. It's super fantastic. The colors that I will be using today are Copic's N8, V09 Violet, BV17 blue, deep reddish blue, and BV25 grayish violet. Some of my favorite colors. This is a great color combination if you want to go for a really intense purple piece like we're going to be using today. So the first thing you want to do is to identify where you want your focal point. This is where you want your eye to be immediately drawn to. So here I've decided since we're using a square sheet of paper, I'm going to put it just about right in the center. So I place my ink on the paper and then I'm going to put a couple drops of that beautiful brass metallic. I'm then going to be surrounding it with isopropyl alcohol as I do in one of my fading technique videos. I'm then going to swirl the ink in and out of the isopropyl alcohol to get that beautiful fade as you can see that I did here. Sometimes I like to add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol to make sure that that fade gets to the size and depth and intensity that I want it to. I don't use a heat gun very often, but when I do, it's just to make sure that my previous fade is completely dry before I move on to the next fade. I've had times in the past where I've started on another fade and not had a completely dry past fade and I've gotten some dripping or it has goofed up the last fade, so make sure that's completely dry. So what I'm going to do here is build on the sense of movement I want in the piece. Here I'm going for a bit of a diagonal flow, so I'm adding another drop of ink a little bit to the lower left corner of this piece. I'm repeating the pattern that I used in the last fade, which is placing the ink down with a drop of metallic and surrounding it with isopropyl alcohol. I'm then moving that ink in and out of the isopropyl alcohol to create a fade that adds intrigue and also adds to the fade that we already have on the paper. I'm pretty happy with this, but I'd like it to have a little bit more intensity from the purple fade to the fade we just added. It's a little bit too dramatic for me, going from that really rich purple to a really light gray. So here I added a bit of an intermediate, which was that, I believe the color was deep reddish blue, I think. Rewind if you wanna check it. <laughs> so here I'm doing the same thing. I added my ink with some metallic and I'm swirling it in and out of that isopropyl alcohol. Now, it's okay if it cuts into some of the existing ink. That's actually to your benefit. You're gonna create more of a consistent flow in your piece. And also, you get some really, really beautiful color combinations. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna continue to push and add to that sense of flow. I'm also blending in the drop of ink I just placed on the paper with the existing ink to make sure we add to that sense of consistency. I'm also adding in some more metallics and then again adding that isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm going to be using my fade 2 technique from one of my previous videos to really just kind of swirl the paper around and make sure I get the metallic really intermixed with the ink and also move the ink in the direction of the fade that I would like it to be. Moving the ink with the isopropyl alcohol in this way provides you with a lot of options with where you want the density of your fade to be. You can literally see the pigment moving back and forth in this close up as I swirl the paper around. So once I've made a decision of where I want the density to be, which is close to my focal point, I dried it with my breath and now I'm going to be adding even more density to my focal point. So now that I have the fade the way that I would like it, again I'm going to be bringing in my heat gun and making sure that the entire fade is completely dry before we move on. So now you have a bit of a choice of where you would like to have your fade to continue. So here I'm going to kind of decide to add in another color a little bit higher up to continue that diagonal movement that I'm looking for. I added more of that metallic because I really like brass. Guilty. <laughs> and I'm also again adding the isopropyl alcohol around the pigment here. 
And again, I'm gonna be swirling it around with my breath and getting that fade to be just the way I'd like it to be. You can see a little bit more detail about how I create these fades in, other, in my other e-course videos. You can also feel free to kind of work with the fade as it is, as I am doing here. Just make sure that you're using a glove to make sure that you have uh, proper safety. So here's a close up. I actually added some of that isopropyl alcohol, a little bit more pigment, and a little bit more metallic to add to that existing fade. So again here, I'm in this example, I'm pulling the isopropyl alcohol into the focal point, but not exactly where the focal point is, just adding to the direction of this piece. This also helps the metallic to be dispersed throughout that fade in a way that also adds to where the focal point is and the overall direction of the piece. Again here, we're drying it, making sure that we don't mess up the fade that we're already happy with. And now we're ready to add more. So now that I'm pretty happy with the overall top of this piece, I'm gonna start adding to the lower half. I like to start with the focal point again, so I'm using a dark color. I gotta be honest, don't remember which color I used here. I think it was the violet. But I used the metallic again, put the isopropyl alcohol around the piece. Again, I gotta accentuate not into the ink, but around it. The system of moving the isopropyl alcohol around with your metallics also creates a really beautiful dispersion of those metallic pigments to add to that fade and also add to the overall direction of your piece. Now that I'm happy with the top portion of the piece, I'm gonna start to begin to think about the bottom half. I added in another piece of ink to where I wanted to add a little bit more intensity there. And now I'm gonna be doing this again up here. I also am adding more metallic into the existing ink. I'm also, sometimes I add another color if I wanna add a little bit more depth to it. In this example, I used the neutral gray color in with the violet to create a really dark violet color, but also have that metallic. Again, I'm placing the isopropyl alcohol around the ink and swirling it around with my breath in and out of the isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm also adding in some of the elements of my fade two technique into this fade, even though I began it using the fade one technique. You can combine these to create a kind of a fade that really fits your piece and creates the look that you are going for. Again, I'm adding a little bit more isopropyl alcohol to the edge of this fade to push it even further out. Now I'm looking, whoop, looking for more consistency in this fade. So I'm actually moving the paper, pushing the alcohol into the fade even more to make sure that you get a consistent blend. This is really important to having a piece that looks very, uh, like subtle and yet interesting, if that makes sense. So now that I push the alcohol into this fade and have a really beautiful line there, I really like how that turned out. So I dried that up, but it's not complete here. So now I'm adding more color and just adding and continuing to that fade in the same system that I've showed you previously. I put the ink down, I add metallic to the ink, surround it with isopropyl alcohol, and push it in and out of the isopropyl alcohol. This is truly the secret to creating an amazing fade with your alcohol ink. You really just want to be moving those pigments with the isopropyl alcohol. That's really the simplest way to create these pieces with immense intrigue and just gorgeous fades and beautiful focal points. It also provides a lot of choices for you with how to create a piece that's unique to you. There's a lot of options with how you can create and add to this fading technique, subtract from it, and just create something that's truly you. This piece has a sense of movement, but it's really missing something. Let's add to the focal point. I placed more ink into the center of the piece, added the metallic, added the isopropyl alcohol around it, and pushed it in and out to add a little bit more. Still not quite there yet. Let's continue to add to the sense of movement and intensity of this piece. 
I added more of that beautiful deep reddish blue to the upper portion of the piece to kind, to kind of help add into the depth of the center of the piece. I'm moving the ink with the isopropyl alcohol here a little bit more slowly because I'm trying to gauge where I want the ink to settle. I ended up deciding that it was okay where it was. I'm still not completely happy with it, but let's move on. I decided to add to the lower portion of the piece to add more of a sense of completion and continuous motion to the movement of the piece by adding in a little bit more at the lower half to help me make a decision about what exactly to do with the middle of it. I added some more ink, metallic, and isopropyl alcohol to create more of a balance in the lower half. I'm pretty happy with this. I like how that gold settled in that beautiful line. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I talk a little bit more about it in my metallic video. It's not as hard as you would think. So now, we really just need to address the center here. There's not a lot happening. I decided to add more of, again, that beautiful deep reddish blue to the center of the piece, add that metallic, add the isopropyl alcohol, and I just decided to get a little bit dramatic with it. I'm going to let that isopropyl alcohol really eat away at a lot of our existing ink. I just, if a piece really isn't clicking, that's okay. That's the beauty of isopropyl alcohol. It gets rid of it. <laughs> Sometimes you'll have a little bit of existing background color on the piece, but that's okay. That actually serves as a really beautiful shadow. As you can see here, we already have a lot more intrigue into the center of our piece. I'm pretty happy with that, especially with that bottom left corner. Ah, the top right corner. I think we're gonna add a little bit more there, but for now, we'll just work a little bit more with the middle left. So here I'm only adding isopropyl alcohol. This is another beautiful thing about alcohol inks is that you can actually just add your isopropyl alcohol, again 91%, and then you can actually add some really small amounts of ink into it and then create more of a intense portion of fade. Not necessarily a large fade as I've shown in some of my past examples. So here I'd like there to be more intensity in the center of this piece, but I don't want it to push too far out. That is why I decided to add the isopropyl alcohol first and then add the ink second. Again, I'm moving this ink more slowly because I'm making a decision. I'm deciding where I want that ink to settle, where I want the pigment to flow, and where I'm happy with it. I'm also using my glove to make sure that I have a nice rounded line of this fade. This is a really great technique if you start to get some jagged edges, which is super normal, it happens. Just use your glove, smooth them out, and push that alcohol with the pigment into where you moved your glove. Yeah, I think I'm liking that a little bit more now. I put a little bit more isopropyl alcohol around the edge to make sure we get a nice clean fade. Pretty happy with that, but still want a little bit more intrigue. So now I'm adding more of that, again, deep reddish blue color. It's really pretty. <laughs> so again, I'm putting a little bit of that ink down and then now, because I've used so much metallic, I'm just putting the isopropyl alcohol down. I'm gonna start to kind of move the paper. Also, make sure that you don't use your thumb with your glove to get ink on it. I've done that in the past. Try to stick to your four fingers so you don't get ink on your painting. Again, I'm using a combination of the fade one and fade two techniques to make sure I get that really beautiful sense of depth intensity and movement in this piece. So now as I'm starting to feel that the piece has a sense of completion, I like to take a paper towel dabbed with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and make sure that I have pulled away at any of these existing little points of ink that I don't want anymore. It kind of helps you create a sense of the piece as a whole. 
So now that I've done that, I'm adding a little bit more to the top right corner. Again, I was not super happy with that, so let's fix it. I put a little bit of that beautiful violet color down with the metallics, with the isopropyl alcohol around it, and again I'm moving the ink in and out of the alcohol. You may wonder why I decided to dab my glove into the ink and then wipe it on my desk. That's because every now and then one drop of ink is just too much. You want to pull away a little bit of it, especially in a point where it's a critical area where you just want a little bit of the color, not so much. So that's an option. You don't have to wipe it on your desk. Probably not advisable. Let's be honest. Use a paper towel. I got too messy. <laughs> so again here, I'm getting pretty happy with the overall piece, but not completely happy. Again, that top right corner, ah, it was bothering me. So I added more of my favorite color in this piece, that deep reddish blue. Put down a little bit of the color, more metallics, the isopropyl alcohol, and I'm gonna be swirling it around in and out of that piece. I'm really happy at this point with how this last fade seems to complete the piece as a whole. You will get this feeling when you create a piece and add that last little touch that just seems to make it sing. It's a really special moment. Again, I'm deciding to take my paper towel, just make sure that I've got every single little piece right, and there you go. She's done.